subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The thickness and the height of the lowest part of our atmosphere is changing. It is going up. It's increasing and this is pushing up the boundary of this layer of atmosphere called the troposphere. The troposphere and the layer above that, the stratosphere, are separated by the tropopause and this marks a change in atmospheric chemical composition as well as thermal structure between these two layers. And the height of the tropopause is now increasing and this is happening because of only anthropogenic climate change and the emission of greenhouse gases into the troposphere. In this video, we shall look at what this increase in troposphere height means, how it was measured, why it's occurring, why the lowest part of the atmosphere is warming and the layer above that is cooling, and how human activity affects these different parts of the atmosphere. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The atmosphere is made up of several layers as most of us studied in school. These layers are differentiated by the temperature of air. The layers are of course the troposphere at the very bottom and then the stratosphere followed by the mesosphere and the thermosphere. About 500 kilometers above the Earth's surface begins the exosphere which eventually thins out into outer space. The troposphere is the lowest part of the atmosphere and it is here that we live. Troposphere contains all of our weather, the clouds, precipitation, rainfall, snowfall, hurricanes, cyclones and everything that we see around us in terms of climate and weather. It contains most of our oxygen as well. It contains three quarters of all atmosphere that surrounds Earth and it contains nearly 95% of all water vapor that goes up into the atmosphere. Dynamic climate and weather processes are visible to us at the bottom of the troposphere which is closer to the surface and the top of the troposphere is called the tropopause. This tropopause marks the end of the troposphere. It is about 10 kilometers above both the polar regions and above the equator it's much higher at about 18 kilometers. Within the troposphere, the layer of air that comprises of the troposphere, the temperature gets colder and colder as we go up. This is because the pressure goes down when we climb. Gravity pulls all gas molecules lower and lower and higher above there is more space for these gases to disperse and spread out and expand. When air expands, it cools down, so the troposphere becomes cooler and cooler as we climb up in altitude. But beyond the tropopause comes the stratosphere for about 50 kilometers. This layer contains nearly all the ozone that protects us from harmful UV radiation from the sun and therefore protects us from cancer and other deadly diseases. This also protects all life on Earth. But in this layer, because the ozone absorbs all the UV radiation, the temperature climbs as we go up. That is the difference between the troposphere and the stratosphere in terms of how the temperature works. And we see the same phenomena at play as we explore different layers of the atmosphere above stratosphere as well. We have the mesosphere where, once again, the temperature drops with height. Then we have the thermosphere where the temperature increases with height because of absorption of X-ray and UV radiation from the sun. And about 80 kilometers from the surface, we have the ionosphere where solar radiation actually turns atoms and molecules into ions with a positive charge. This layer, the ionosphere, reflects and absorbs radio waves. So this is where shortwave radio signals bounce around in our communication networks. Then the exosphere. The exosphere contains primarily hydrogen and some oxygen atoms and is about 500 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. 
and then even higher when we go to thousands of kilometers away from the surface of the Earth, we have the magnetosphere and the Van Allen radiation belts. These extend nearly 15,000 kilometers from the surface. These radiation belts and the magnetosphere protect us from harmful radiation once again and the magnetosphere acts like a protective umbrella around the Earth shielding us from solar radiation, solar winds and other kinds of cosmic phenomena that can affect life had there been no magnetosphere. It also is what helps in keeping our atmosphere in so that the solar wind and radiation doesn't strip it away. The troposphere is where we do all of our weather related research with weather balloons and other equipment. So it's a critical part of our understanding of climate processes. We've known that above the equator, the tropopause begins at about 18 kilometers and above the pole, it does so a little lower at 10 kilometers. But now, Canadian researchers have found out that the height of the tropopause has been continuously going up in the Northern Hemisphere over the last half a century almost. The team used a lot of atmospheric data like temperature, humidity, pressure and all of these collected by weather balloons and with accompanying GPS data between the years of 1980 to 2020. So that's about four decades. The researchers found that the height of the tropopause was steadily increasing in all of these 40 years at a rate of about 53 meters per decade. The altitude of the tropopause is an important indicator of human global warming and using weather data, it is easy to calculate the impact of natural climate variations like the El Nino or volcanic eruptions, which can raise temperatures in the troposphere. But the researchers found that overall the height of the tropopause and the troposphere is climbing only because of human induced activity and that is increasing emissions. Emissions enter into the troposphere and all the greenhouse gases are actually adding volume to the troposphere, making it thicker and thus climb up in height. Additionally, because of our past experience with chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, which affected the ozone layer, the stratosphere is actually also decreased in size due to the deterioration of the ozone layer. The stratosphere is becoming cooler while the troposphere is becoming warmer. The researchers calculated the rate of the climb of the altitude of tropopause, which is data from 2001 to 2020 for two decades because before that we had a couple of large fluctuations in large-scale weather patterns naturally like variations in El Nino. The team also used radio sonde instruments or those instruments that probe the weather and used GPS data for long-term observations. And with all of this data, now this is the conclusion that human activity specifically and human activity alone is actually leading to the thickening of our atmosphere with the height of the lowest part of the atmosphere actually climbing up. And this troposphere is where the temperature decreases as we go up, which means that there is more volume of warmer air being added to the troposphere. This warming coupled with the thinning of the now recovering ozone layer is not really great news for us. The increase in the height of the tropopause affects weather and circulation all over. And now we can see in quite a bit of detail how physically at a planetary scale, we are altering the structure of our own atmosphere and the air we breathe and live in. There isn't enough research into how the height of the troposphere affects our climate and weather. But with increasing research into the nitty gritties of climate processes, scientists are hopeful that we will find out more about how the height of the tropopause affects us and our weather processes here.